to press record. So we'll send out the recordings to, to everybody after the session. Um, so yes, my name's Naila. Um, I'm an academic librarian and I'm joined by my colleagues Hazel and Lisa, um, who are also librarians at the university. And, um, so I'll lead the session and Lisa and Hazel will, um, will man the chat so if you've got any questions as we go along please just sort of pop them in the chat or um and then um i, I can come to them and, I, and we'll we're hoping to do a bit of a sort of a, a q a at the end so this session will sort of be um a, a mixture of, sort of, of of presentation and demonstrations and then followed by sort of um a chance for you to ask any questions at the end so i'll get started because it's it's 11 o'clock um so just to introduce you to EndNote, so presumably you're here because you've stumbled across EndNote or you've heard of it through your tutors. Um, so this session is going to talk to you about EndNote. So first of all, what actually is EndNote? So EndNote is what's known as a reference management system. So it's it's software that you can use for managing your references. So that is references that you find uh, for for your written work. Um, so when you're doing your assignments or if you're doing your independent studies, you're going to find different pieces of information from different, you know, essentially mainly from library resources such as the library catalogue or Library Plus, etc. And it's a means of storing that information in one central place. And so EndNote really has three primary purposes, I would say. Firstly, um, it's that it's a means of storing all of the references that you find for your written work. The second sort of primary f function of it, I think, is that it syncs up with Word. So it can do and format your um, your references for you within Word. And lastly, uh, the third sort of primary um, function and purpose of EndNote is that you can store your PDFs within EndNote. So you can store them all within your EndNote library. And you can also dif do different things with your PDFs. So you can highlight sections and make notes to yourself. So that's a really useful feature of EndNote. So I'll demonstrate that to you as well. So essentially what you're doing is you can create your own personal electronic library of references. And you can store them all in one central place um, and keep a record of these as, as you go. And the last point as well is that you can put in your own records as well as you, as you find these as you go along. So why is EndNote useful? So it's, as I said, it's a really useful tool for storing and using your references as you go. And I sort of look at this picture and it makes me shudder. So I think back to when I was at university and, you know, with the best will in the world, I thought that I was sort of organised with all my post-it notes and my PDF strewn all over the place. But when it came to actually writing my, you know, my written work, it could be, you know, a bit, <laughs> could be really fraught trying to find things that I'd saved somewhere. It could be a bit a bit of a disaster. So it what it does, it, it can save all of your notes, all of your um your PDFs as you find in one central place. So you won't be like me and have post-it notes strewn in your bag. <laughs> um it, it it should save a record of all of your notes and your and your written work as you as you go along and sync up with words so when you're writing your written work. And this is all useful preparation for for your assignments and for your written work. It's a means of keeping track of your references and organising your thoughts. So you can do really useful things with EndNote. You can start to customise it and personalise it as a, as a means that makes sense to you. It's a bit small here, um, but I'll share my screen and I'll show you what I mean. But you can start to create groups so you can organise your references into things such as groups. And how you do this is really up to you. Um, and you can start to make notes to yourself. So it's a main, means of keeping track and, and making notes and organising your thoughts as, as you go along. And citing things more easily. So this is a big sell of, of EndNote, is that it syncs up with Word and it can do your referencing for you. However, if you're not already familiar with referencing, if you've not done any referencing, we, we, we wouldn't recommend that you use EndNote at, at first. We've got a really useful tool um, in the library that we that we subscribe to called Cite, Cite Them Right. And that's and we would recommend definitely using that, particularly when you first start, because that really teaches you the principles of referencing. Because if you're not already sure how to do referencing, you may not it may not be clear to you what EndNote is doing. But if you are familiar with it, this can save you lots of time and do your referencing for you. And you can switch between referencing styles. So if you wanted to use APA, which is used in psychology, or if you wanted to use Harvard, 
you can do this really swiftly in the click of a button. So it saves you lots of time. And lastly, PDFs as well. So you can make notes to yourself. You can highlight sections. So it really is your own electronic library of your of your references. And you can use this with you on on your own personal devices or, you know, on your on your personal device at home. So it, it really is sort of one central place for all of your references. You can keep a track of things as, as you go. So getting started. So I'm going to um, switch over and actually sort of show you how this works in practice. Um, so if I apologies, if this isn't that seamless, um, I'm going to switch over to sharing my screen. So it should all go back into the ether. Yep, there we go. So first of all, how do we um, download EndNote to begin with? So you can download EndNote from course resources. And it's this tab here which says software. And you can see here um, where it says EndNote. Also, I should have mentioned from the outset that I'm this is um, I'll be demonstrating using EndNote for a Windows computer. EndNote does actually look quite different on an Apple computer. And we are developing. Um, we've got an online tutorial that's in development uh, for, and the one for EndNote may look slightly different. So we'll have a separate one for, for an Apple device because it does look slightly different. So just to make you aware of that, if you are using an Apple computer, it may look slightly different. But it's listed here in course resources and it's in software and you just need to click on EndNote. And here is where you can download EndNote. So as you can see, there's a link specifically for EndNote for Mac. And at the top, there's one for, for Windows. And it downloads into a zip file. And it just takes you through the process of downloading EndNote onto your device. But once you have downloaded it, you just need to find it in your uh, Windows tab at the bottom here. So you press Start. And this will be arranged alphabetically. And it's just under E for EndNote. And you can see this symbol here. And then it should open. So we're using the latest version of EndNote. So it's recently updated to EndNote 20. So it does actually look quite different to uh, what, what the previous version. So I, I'm actually still getting my head around this new this new version. So I don't want to update it. So I'll just open it and I'm going to open a new. Um, a new EndNote library because it automatically has taken it taken me to the last one I had open and it works in a way like. Um, like 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 say uh, word so you would open a new document each time it works like that so it's not really like a website that you log into it's more like a file so i'm going to give this um it all so what you need to do is select new each time so file and new and it automatically will call it my endnote library so i'm going to leave it as that and then i've got my new box here so when you first open it, it looks a bit like a kind of an empty box. So you can see we've got this sort of blank white window in the middle. And the tabs along the top, I think, uh, if you're already familiar with Microsoft um, packages such as Word, Excel, Outlook, etc. I think there are some similarities with that. So with file, there's new, uh, save and then edit and there's preferences. So it's very similar to using Word. Uh, packages um, and it's worth sort of going once you if you if you are interested in using it downloading it and just familiarizing yourself with these tabs and what's here so what I'm going to do is is start to fill it with references so it's no longer just an empty box so we start to get some references in here so we can see see what it does so if I go to the library And I'm going to go to the library catalogue. So I'm going to have a look for some books. So say I'm doing my written work and I'm quite interested in getting a dog. So I'm interested in pet therapy. And so I've done a search on Library Plus and I want to have a look at some books um, in relation to pet therapy. So this looks like an interesting book. So if this was one that I wanted to use in my written work, if I wanted to put it into my EndNote library, what I would need to do is click on this button here that says save. And here it gives us different options. So EndNote 
works in the way of it uses the language of exporting and importing. And what that means is extracting and downloading all of the information about this particular record. So if I click on the title, what that means is the information about the title that you would probably use when you're doing your referencing. So you would use the information such as the title, the author, the publication, so the publisher, sorry, where it was published. So if you've done some referencing, this will be familiar to you, this sort of information that you would be, you would be using. So it pulls out all of that data and puts it into EndNote. So we need to click the button that says save and it gives us different exporting options. Now, there are different versions of EndNote, but the version that we're using is the desktop version, not the web version, because it's, it's sort of more stable. Um, so we're going to select EndNote desktop. And then what it should do, you can see it here. So it's it's downloaded that file at the bottom of the page and you can see it's got this sort of, you probably can't see, it might be quite small on your screens, but it's got this, um, the, the EN um, symbol at the front. And all we need to do is just click on that file and it's moved it up into EndNote. So here I've got my record. So it's no longer just an empty box. We've got a reference within our EndNote library. And if we click on it, it shows us. So we've got a right hand panel here that shows us the information about this particular record. And if we select edit, we can then edit those fields or have a look to see what fields are, are, are there. So we've got the title of the book, the author. It says that it's a book. If we click on this, it shows us all the different types of, of reference type we could have in our EndNote library. And there's all sorts in here. Um, music social media, etc. I'm going to keep it on book because that's what it is. It tells us that it's the fourth edition. And this is the URL for where it came from. And then if I click on summary, it gives us the summary of, of that particular record. Along the left hand side, it shows us information about um, about how much is in this EndNote library. So it, at the top here, we've got a tab that says all references. So I've got one reference overall. And underneath it says I've recently imported one reference. So if I want to add another one, I go back to the library catalogue and go back and then just select another one. So if I select one that's say an ebook, so if I click on the left hand panel here and select ebook and say I want this one. So again, just click save and the option is EndNote desktop and then just click on the file at the bottom. And it's moved it up into EndNote. So I've got, again, one imported reference that's just been imported. And above it, it says I've got two references overall. So every time you import references into EndNote, it will show you your most recently imported one and then how many you have above it. So that's useful. So you can keep a track of which ones have most recently been imported and how many you have in total. If you want to sort your records, so if you want to look at um, to, to sort them, you can sort them by author here or by year, by title, and it'll arrange it alphabetically for you. Now, you may also want to um, download some records from um, from databases, from for, 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 for journal articles, for instance. So I'm going to show you how you can do this from the li from Library Plus. So Library Plus, um, if you're not already aware, Library Plus is our discovery system. So it searches across the library catalogue, but it also searches much wider. So it's got plus in the title as a way of remembering. And how we can find Library Plus, there's two different ways of finding this. We can either find it through the third tile here, find subject information, or if we scroll down, there's the search Library Plus um, box there. I'm going to go this way. I tend to do things the long winded way. And Library Plus also searches across the majority of databases that we have. So we have 240 databases. Now, databases are essentially online libraries of, of all the different, sub and it spans all the different subject areas that are taught at the university. So it searches across the majority of these databases, and they're mainly comprised of journal articles which is the, probably, I would say, the most up-to-date uh, type of information because journal articles are much quicker 
to produce than a book because they're, they're, they're much, they're, they're only a few, two, a, a couple of pages long. So the turnaround time of a journal art, of a journal is much, much quicker than a book because they can be hundreds or thousands of pages long. So they take a long time to, to write and to be published. So Library Plus search is the majority of the databases that we have, which are listed here. So it, it searches very, very extensively and exhaustively. And it's the third link here to Library Plus. So sometimes if you do a search on Library Plus and you've got quite a broad topic, you can get quite large, large results. But we can but we can filter these down if 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 you need to. Sorry, that's I'm going off piece. That's not the we're talking about EndNote. Sorry, we're not talking about Library Plus, but just so you you're aware. I'm going to stick with the main with the same example of pet therapy. So I'm going to select. If I click advanced search, I get more search boxes. I'm just going to search in the title to make it much. So pet therapy and I'm interested in pet therapy for students. And then search. So I've got 48 results. And if I want to move these over into my EndNote library, there's two ways of doing this. How I can do it, first of all, is if I go to, so when you're on a new database and you want to um, export the results and put them into your EndNote library, it's worth having a look somewhere on the page that says something like share or export or download. And so it says here share. And as I said, there's two main ways of exporting from Library Plus. The first one is if we add it to our folder. So if we click share, and then results one to 48, and it moves them up to the top here where it says folder. And then we can export these. So we've got 48 results, click select all. And then there's a link on the right hand side that says export. And then we look to make sure that it's in the EndNote format. So it says here EndNote or other different types. So we're looking that it's this format that's that's Riz. And so we select save. And then it should download these for us. We can see them at the bottom and it tend the file type tends to look like three blocks stacked on top of one another. We just need to click on this file and then it moves it up into our EndNote library. So it says here we've got 48 results and these are our results and we've got 50 overall. So that's our two records that we previously saved from, from the library catalogue. The other way to export them, and this works better if you have quite a lot of results. So if you have um, hundreds of results, this works better uh, because doing it this way that I just did, you can only do it sort of say 50 records at a time. So it can be quite time consuming, but you can also where it says share, export the results and email them to yourself. So if I click email a link and then this is who the email will come from. It will come from support at EBSCO. So that's who provides the database. If I put in my email here and then library plus. So just to say that's where it's come from. And we want to make sure that we've selected this top format here. So we want them in the RIS format and then click send. And then it's really quick. You'll get an email within just a few minutes to say that that um, has come through. And this is it. So you just get this link here that you need to click on. And it downloads as a zip file. Double click on that link. Oh, that's not the right file. File type. I try again. So it's this one. Yes, that's the one. So you want to see that it's it's the file type that looks like three blocks. Double click on it. And it's imported those in for me. So it's done it really, really quickly. So I've got 48 that have recently just been imported and 90, 98 overall. So that's how you um, export from a database. So as I say, if you run a database, just look for somewhere that says export 
or download or share and then make sure that the end it will normally say what reference management management type you can use and look for where it says EndNote and then just click save and it's as easy as that and then just click on the file that's downloaded and it should automatically open up in your EndNote library. So I've mentioned about creating groups now this is a really really useful feature so you can start to arrange your references so you can put them into different sections and do things that kind of make sense to you and how we can do this is in the tabs at the top where it says groups you can create a group and it's on this left hand panel here so say if I want to create a group for sections for my introduction so I've just gone to groups create group given it a name and it's there and then all I need to do is just select a record if I want to select more than one I press control on my keyboard and if you click on one it just sort of highlights it in this sort of bluey green color and then I can just drag it across into my group and they're all saved there so it's sort of keeping a record of things so you can easily select that those records and I know that's where I've put them and you can put things in more than one group as well um, and it's up to you however you want to do this to so say if I was interested in um, a particular aspect of with my example if I was looking for ones about say dogs I could create one for that um, it's really up to you how, how you want to arrange your, your references so you can start to customize it and do things that make sense to you there's another feature as well called um, smart group and this is where it automatically does it for you so again with the references at the tab at the top with groups it's the second option and it's called create smart group so I'm going to give it a name so say if I want to um, do one for dogs and then in these drop downs you can tell EndNote where you want to search so if I select any field so this is searching in the title abstract journal name all of the different um, fields that there are and put in say dog and then create it's created that group for me so it saved me having to go through all of the references it's done that for me so then if I wanted to look at these first um, or you know um, this was a particular aspect that I was most interested in or if you wanted to find things that you weren't interested in you could you, you could use this feature to quickly find things and either include them or whatever it is you want to do with them so that's a really useful feature that's that's automatically done so that's smart groups as you can see I've got quite a few references here so I've I've imported um, references twice so you can see I've got um, duplicate records and you can automatically remove duplicate records in EndNote which is a really useful feature of it and this comes up say if you're searching more than one database so I know a lot of health students may be searching databases such as, say, uh, Medline, but also Embase or Sinal, for example. You can get duplicate records. So journal articles may be put on more than one database. So you may you may find that you get the same record that comes through more than once. Um, you can automatically remove duplicates in EndNote, which is really useful. And if you're having to keep a track of how many references you find for your written work, this is a really useful feature of EndNote. And how you can do that is again at the tabs at the top. If you go to library and find duplicates, and then what it does, it'll automatically show the records that it believes to be duplicates side by side. So you can see these are the same these look like they're the same record and you can select which record you want to keep so I can say I want to keep this one or say this one and it highlights in blue the ones where there is a little bit of a difference between the two articles so it's quite useful that it doesn't just automatically delete them it gives you the control over whether you want to want to delete them or not if you want to do this um, really quickly, if you don't have time to go through all of these records, what you can do is if you press this red X at the top to close this duplicate um, finder, and then it's highlighting the ones in green that it believes to be duplicates. And if you right click and put move references to trash, 
it will get rid of all those references for you. And they're in this section here that says trash. So it won't ever delete things. If you if you want to, um, if you make a mistake, you can click on a record, right click and put restore to library. So it won't get rid of things indefinitely. So if you accidentally delete something, you can always move it back to your library. But that's really useful to remove the duplicate records because you don't want to be looking at the same records more than once. Um, so that was in library and find duplicates. And then it's got rid of those for me. So now I've got 47 results rather than 98 because I'd, I'd imported those more than once. And again, as I said, if you want to change how they're, they're um, ordered, you can click on title, author. So it's up to you how you want to um, to see, you know, to go through your results. And if I want to read this particular um, so say I've imported all of my results and I'm now going to go through them. What you would do is click on the first record and then along this right hand side here, I've got the information about this record. You can make this screen bigger if you want to pull it across and then you can browse, um, scroll down and this is the abstract. So if I want to read the abstract of this particular record, and then there's a field here that's very, very useful called research notes. Now, this is intended for you to make a, a note of particular records. And it's up to you how you want to do this. So what you could do, how I've used this in the past, is use this field, research notes, to make a note to yourself about this particular record. So say if it's one that you want to include in your written work, you could put something, you could use something like a code to say in or out so it's not useful to you or useful or whatever it is that you want to, to use that makes sense to you. So say if I put in and then save that record and then go to the next one. And I've, again, I've got this research note. So I've read the title and the abstract. So if I put in again, so I think this is useful and I want to include it and then go to the next one and do the same thing. If I shut down for the day or if I've gone through all of my uh, results, as I've got here, all of my 47, I can start to make a note of and keep a record of how many I've decided that I'm going to include that I've put that 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 note into myself with. So at the top, we've got this search bar here and we can search for different things within within the library. And I want to look for that note that I just made to myself. So it's researcher notes so it's this one here and then i'd put in and then search and it's showing me i've got my three records here search free results so then i could create a group and say include these are the ones that i've just marked and then pull those across into my group so i can keep a record of all the ones that are useful to me that, that I want to include in my in my written work. And then I could do the same with, say, exclude or out. So if you make a note to yourself that's consistent, that makes sense to you, you can quickly organise your results in what makes sense to you and start to sort of put, arrange them and, and start to um, use them at a later date. So that's that note here. That's really, really useful. That one that's called research notes that's intended for you to keep a record of, of all the different um, articles that you find. And then to, if you want to close that, you can do that in that box here. So that's the groups. And as I said, that's that's a, a means of sort of it's up to you how you want to arrange this. Or you could do it whereby you have one EndNote library and then you use the groups to put information in there for each different piece of written work that you're doing. And so you'd have a group for a particular assignment. Again, it's it's up to you how you tailor it and how you how you want to arrange that. I was going to show you as well Word, so how it syncs up with Word, because this is a really, really useful feature of, of EndNote. So I've got my Word document up here. And once you've downloaded EndNote onto your computer, you'll have a tab at the top called EndNote 20. And what we can do is we can just use this button where it says insert citation and you can quickly start to pop citations in as you go. So how we do this is in EndNote, so say um, I've got my EndNote 
library open at the same time. Say if I just click on some records, so if I press control my keyboard to select more than one and then go back to Word, all I need to do is go to the button that says insert citation, select the second option, insert selected citation. So I've got those clicked in EndNote and then it's added those for me automatically. And this is the reference list here at the bottom and this is in my written work. So I could put a title and then this is the, the references at the bottom. If I want to change the referencing style, I can just do that for the drop down here. So if I wanted the APA 7th style, select a different style and there are hundreds in, in here. So APA 7th and then OK. And it will automatically change change that for me. Um, if I want to edit any references, we learned this recently because we had a demonstration from, from um, someone from EndNote. They recommended don't just go and delete these references because um, it doesn't delete all of the information. There are some buttons here. So if you want to edit and manage citations. And then you can remove it here. So that's listed there rather than just um, deleting it on your keyboard. But it's so easy just to click that button and click insert selected citation and then sort of do it as, as you go. Um, and lastly, PDFs. So EndNote can go off and search the Internet for PDFs. So I'm just going to select a few um, just for the sake of time. Because So I've selected a few by pressing control and A on my keyboard. And it's through, uh, I think it's either library or references. Yes, it's references. References, find full text. And it's looking, and what it does is it goes out to the internet and sees if it can find PDFs and then pulls them in. Typically, it hasn't found any. Um, if I try it again, control and A. And you can see it's really, really quick. It's found a URL of one. So if we look at this one, it's found the URL here. And yes, typically it hasn't hasn't found any. If I wanted to um, attach a PDF, what I could do is um, is just attach it myself here where it says attach PDF. And if I just look for any PDF, so attach that one. And then what it looks like is we can just click on it and open. And then we've got the PDF within EndNote itself. And we can do lots of really useful stuff here. So it's quite small, it's quite hidden, but we can, on the top left hand side, we can highlight sections. And the most useful feature I think is you can add a sticky note. So it's this first um, little bubble where it says add a sticky note. And you can click it anywhere in your PDF, make a note for yourself, so say, I think this is useful for my introduction and add another one here. And then you close that and you can close that PDF down and save those notes. We can find them in again at the top here. And if we have to scroll up to the top and it says it's an option called PDF notes. And typically it's not, it's not doing it. <laughs> so maybe it's not saved. If I save that record, yes, that's it. So we make sure we save and then search for it. Yes, and it's found that particular reference where I made those notes to myself. So that's really, really useful. Because as I said, if I think about back to when I was a student and you make sticky notes and they fall off your PDF and you can't remember what note you've made it to yourself when, it saves it all in one central place so you can read the full text um, 
of the paper in EndNote itself, make notes to yourself, and then you don't have to worry about where you've saved it. It's all saved in one central place. So that's really useful. And it syncs up with Word. So you can you just have to use EndNote and sync it up with Word and, and make use of those notes as you go. So it's all done electronically. So that's really, really useful. Um, and it's showing here as here, this is your document and the references that you've put, put within it. So EndNote is really, really useful for syncing up with your with your written work. Um, so, yes, I was going to move it over to you, to you guys if you had any questions or if you wanted me to go over anything um, again, if I've got if I've covered anything too quickly. Um, but that really is EndNote in in a nutshell. Um, did anyone have any um, any questions or anything that you wanted me to? Good question. Yes, it is. You you can. Well, there's the web version, but it's best. I would say it's best using on your you can. Let's see if I can. Go back. Uh, you can um, sync your um, EndNote to your. Um, let's go back. So. Yes, you can see at the top where it says sync configuration. So if you register for an account with EndNote, you can. Um, so it's showing my email address there. You can sync your um, EndNote with your. So it'll sync with your email. But it does work best. Um, if you so we had so we had someone from EndNote give us some training the other day and he said it works best if you save your EndNote on your personal device. So don't save it on on, say, the cloud on OneDrive. But if you register for um, an account with EndNote, so where it says sync, it will prompt you to register your your details. So that way, if you're using it will have to be a computer that has EndNote installed on it first of all so if you're using a computer at, at the university it should have endnote installed um so you should be able to access your um endnote account through this sync status here um but it, it does work best on your own personal device if that <laughs> so that's a very long-winded answer <laughs> yes yeah I think what it does is it kind of syncs up with it's not something I've really done so much. It's um tend to just use one one computer for my EndNote, but it tends but I am pretty sure you can you can do it if through the syncing option, but I think it probably does work best just on your your personal computer. But if you have your your own personal um, laptop. But yes, what I would say is is make use of the of the syncing feature in EndNote because it, it 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 I think that's one of the big things of the new update is that you can share share it with yourself. So register for an account and you should be able to to access your your um your um, database that way through um through that syncing um feature. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And also, what I'm not sure if I, if I mentioned this is that the university um, IT services supports EndNote. This is why, because um, there are other referencing management systems that you may have heard of, such as Mendeley or Zotero, but EndNote is a paid-for system, so it's it's something that IT services can provide support with. So if you do have any help uh, and do need any help with accessing it on a on a university device in particular. Um, IT services should be able to help you. Oh, yeah, brilliant, Lisa, that's right, yeah. Naila, we, um, we had a question um, from uh, a student asking if you can just go over the citation section again. Absolutely. Can show how yeah. to insert a citation. I think that's what, Fionn, you're wanting. Would that be OK? Yeah.
brilliant okay right so it's going back in the ether again <laughs> okay so this is my say so this is my written work um and so this is my information that i've written so i've just written this one um sentence here so what you would need to do is place your cursor uh, where you want to put your citation so i've put it after the t in assignment here and then you just need to so once you've downloaded endnote onto your computer then when you open word you'll have this new endnote 20 tab here and then it's this button where it says insert citation and there's two different ways of doing this firstly you could put do the first option where you do insert citation and search for a particular citation so say it automatically put smith here um so if you just put a and then you could search for a citation so it, it'll search within endnote to to look for a citation but the way i prefer to do it is um insert selected citation which is the opposite one because that way in endnote itself you can select which one you want to to put in yourself so have a look at endnote and say and decide which one you want to put in so say if i wanted to put in this one and then go back so make sure it's clicked and it's highlighted in green and go back to your word document and then click insert citation and insert selected citation and it's put that in for me so it's saying this is the author and the year and it's sort of in gray so we can't so we just leave it just trust that endnote's done done its thing and then in the bottom it's added it to the reference list and it's it's at the moment it's in apa seventh but it's doing all of the things for me that, that you know that it saves you having to do it yourself so it's put the authors the, the references at the bottom alphabetically it seems so it's put that one so the author's name is hodson it's put that at the top um but if i want to change this to harvard i just need to click on this drop down and harvard is up there because harvard's a really commonly used and then it's changed that for me um and it's put hudson there and it's got the references underneath if you want to change the references so so then hudson is the third is is underneath that one so it's it's ordered them in in the style for for harvard if i wanted to add another one so again go back to my endnote library and select a reference to so say if i want to add this one so click on it and then go back to my word document insert selected citation and it's added that one there and it's added it in the in the article oh, sorry in the written word work itself and then underneath in the reference list it's added that that particular reference if you want to change anything so if you think that something you know if it hasn't formatted you can select edit citation and edit that reference and make some changes yourself or you could do that yourself in endnote so you would go to endnote itself and edit you could edit the fields if you if you thought that something wasn't quite appearing correctly and then select save and then you just need to go back to your word and you would select um update citations and bibliography and it would make those changes for you yeah yeah Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> so it's a bit it's a bit of a learning curve, but I think once you've. Um, I think once I think it's worth the effort, I think once you've kind of got your head around it, it can save a lot of time. It can say, you know, having and I, I do think the benefits sort of outweigh sort of the negatives of having to get your head around a new system, because it, it can it can be really useful for just having one central place to save all of your references and syncing it up with Word. But I think it's it's like anything, you know, the more you use it, the more familiar it will become to you. And I'd also say as well that they EndNote itself have got lots of really useful videos um, 
and and there's also lots on youtube as well like like lots of things um but yeah there's lots of really useful uh, videos online 